right, I've been a while, way a while. Everything's up on the hair. <clears throat> Things are hectic. And uh, that's why. So, uh, love it or hate it. Anyways, UFC 109 picks. Um, it's not going to be so much picks as I'm going to try out that idea of breaking down the fight, saying what each fighter has to do to win the fight, and kind of letting you make up your mind who will win based on that information on your own. Um, I'm going to try this, so please leave some feedback like it this way if you want me to go back to making picks that is also cool um, anyways open up the night main card only Frank Trigg versus Matt Sarah uh, 170 pound belt uh, we got Matt Sarah is the BJJ black belt Frank Trigg is a, is a wrestler of course both guys have a little bit of rudimentary stand up but uh, it has been shown in the past that both can be beaten pretty badly on the feet um, Basically, this is a, this is a very similar matchup to the Matt Sarah and Matt Hughes matchup in that stylistically it's the same matchup. Trigg is very much a Matt Hughes with better striking, and I think at this point in his career he still has something to give, and I don't think Matt Hughes really does. Um, Trigg was tearing it up on the, uh, we'll go lower circuits, I guess, before losing to Josh Koscheck. Sarah, of course, we lost to GSP Matt Hughes recently. In the end, if you look at it, Matt Serra is going to want to keep this fight standing. He's going to want to try and use those heavy hands of his to knock out Trigg, who seems to have a bit of a suspect chin. Um, because, I mean, if he could take Trigg down, that would also be beautiful for him. But I'm not really sure if he can. Trigg's game plan is going to be probably to take down Matt Serra, hold him down, or maybe try to outstrike him. Um, it's a fight that could go in a couple different ways. I, I think maybe Trigg will come out, feel it out feel out the striking. If he can outstrike Sarah, then Sarah's in a shithole. Um, if he has to take Sarah to the ground, he's going to have to watch out for, you know, having a BJJ black belt on his back. But Sarah is not the greatest from his back. He's more of a topside BJJ black belt. Just kind of built for it that way. And he's still small for 170. So I've kind of given a pick there. But at the same time, I'm not going to actually state it. Dan Miller, Damian Maya. Basically, you got the well-rounded mixed martial artist versus the BJJ phenom. Um, Dan Miller usually is the better grappler in his fights, but this fight, he, he's not. Anyone who thinks he is, if anyone in the Miller camp thinks that he can out-grapple Demi Amaya, you were insane. Um, that being said, he has, he has in theory, the better stand-up. Um, if he can sprawl and brawl, he could win this fight. Demi Amaya's key is... Cardio is not the greatest. Striking is not the greatest. His chin, um, after the Mark Hart fight, we're starting to, you know, question that a little bit. I wouldn't say it's, I wouldn't say it's a suspect chin, because it's only one time. And I don't believe that makes a suspect chin, but it's a little bit questionable. Damian Maia gets this fight to the ground. It's gonna end, I think, pretty quick. I mean, Miller is a better grappler than most of the guys we've seen Maya twist into a pretzel. That being said. He's still not anywhere on the level of Maya. No one at 185 is, except for perhaps Dean Lister. Um, that's kind of all there is to say on that matter. Paulo Tiago, Mike Swick. We get the grappler versus the striker, effectively. Swick's got some tools in the ground game. Tiago's got some tools, tools in the stand-up game. So it's not a completely one-dimensional fighter versus a one-dimensional fighter. But the, it is quite obvious where each fighter wants his fight. Swick wants it standing. That's where he always wants it, um, except for the David Loazzo fight. He's coming off the loss to Dan Hardy. He looked he looked garbage in the fight with Dan Hardy. Um, uh, but we'll see if he can rebound here. He's probably got the better hands. I would have to say so. Tiago's striking looks, although kind of effective, It's uh, it looks a bit awkward at times. But he's a tough dude. Hard to finish. Never been finished. If he can take Swick down, he's probably got the better BJJ game, but Swick's got some skills. Swick's also very hard to take down. So the game plan basically is going to be Swick's going to want to sprawl and brawl this fight. Tiago's one going to want to get to the ground, either hold him there or go for a submission. That's basically what this fight boils down to. It's pretty simple when you look at this fight. It's who can impose where the fight takes place. Nate Marquardt versus Chill Sonnen. Two very big middleweights, two guys with a wrestling background. Uh, Marquardt's got more tools in the box, I think, than Sonnen, even though I think Sonnen is the better wrestler. But I look at it the, from a BJJ standpoint, i got to give that to Marquardt. i got to give the striking standpoint to Marquardt, uh, both on variety of strikes and effectiveness of strikes. Uh, Sonnen's really just got some boxing on the feet. He doesn't really have kicks to incorporate. Marquardt does. I think Marquardt's got the faster, more powerful hands, uh, better kicks. Basically, Marquardt has a lot of options in this fight. I think if he can keep it standing, that's a key to victory. 
If it goes to the ground, though, he could be in trouble because Sonnen's a very good wrestler. Mark Hart hasn't really shown me a heck of a lot off his back because he hasn't been put there, admittedly. So maybe maybe there is something there. I, I don't know. We haven't seen it. Um, but yeah, that will be... The Chael Sonnen game plan in any fight he's ever in, except for you know what should have been his game plan against Damian Maya, is take the guy down. Uh, he's a world-class wrestler. He has some fairly vicious ground and pound. He doesn't really have a lot of what you call subs. Um, he's been subbed a lot, but it's been by good submission artists. Uh, and lately, he's looked pretty good. I mean, he fought off a couple of Maya for a while. He fought off Dan Miller a lot um, with uh, the guillotine. And uh, he showed it showed some good sub-defense in that fight. So basically, the game plan for Ch Sonnen is take it to the ground. For Marquardt, I would say that his best chance is probably if he can stuff Sonnen's takedowns and keep it standing, that would be his best bet. But if he can take Sonnen down, that's another that's another very good option. So he's got he's got a couple of ways to go with that, and it's not such a defined fight. Mark Coleman, Randy Couture, uh, 205 pound fight, possible title shot, which is bogus. Um, that's my opinion. You can't really give the winner of this a title shot when uh, Randy is 1-0 since his return to light heavy with a very unconvincing win against Brandon Vera, who, well, he's... Well, people continuously rank him highly on based on potential. He hasn't ever really shown us that fighter that, you know, we, we know he can be. You look at him on paper, and you think he should kick the crap out of the guys they put him up against, and he doesn't. Um... But Randy, we know the game. Great Greco-Roman with some pretty good dirty boxing. He's got okay hands. Uh, he says he's working on his grappling a lot. So maybe we'll see that. Mark Coleman, 2-1 and one at the 205 limit. Or is it 1-1? One one? Lost to who? I beat Bonner. I keep thinking there's a third fight in there. Um, can't recall what it is, though, for the life of me. Also a very good wrestler. Uh, an, an amazing wrestler from a technical standpoint, but these two guys, a combined age of 91 years old, 46 for Randy, 41 for Col or 45 for Coleman. It's a little bit of a battle battle of father time. I'm pretty sure this is the oldest main event in the history of the UFC, um, unless something with Dan Severn actually topped it, because uh, of course Dan Severn's older. Um, so. You know, when two wrestlers meet each other, it's usually the one that brings that X factor, that that ability in some el other element of the game. I would have to say striking probably goes a bit to Randy. If he can stop Coleman's takedowns, I'll strike him, and that's what he seems he wants to do. He gave an interview at the, I believe it was the fight night, but it may have been the last pay-per-view, actually, um, talking about his game plan of this fight, which was to stick and move. I don't really know if he has the speed for that. That's the problem. Um, if he can shrug off Coleman's takedowns, that game plan could work and really well. I'm just not entirely certain he can do that. Um, he says he also is working on his grappling a lot to try to show that wrinkle to his game. Randy Couture, we, we, we've seen him submit people, but generally speaking, that's not been his game. If Coleman takes him down, I don't think there's a lot of danger Randy poses off his back. So, you know, the Coleman game plan is the Coleman game plan as it always is, which is, you know, take the other guy down and hold him down and ground and pound if, if you can. And um, I think he can right? he can, he can ground and pound Randy Couture if he can put him on his back. The question is if he can put him on his back. Um, Randy, better striking. Um, you know, before the Brandon Vera fight, I always said this is no contest. Uh, Randy would win, which is kind of giving you a pick as to what I would have picked before. But, you know, now this is a lot closer fight. He just really did not look good against Brandon Vera from a wrestling standpoint. Um Either way, I kind of foresee this going to a decision, and it's going to be the guy with who exercises his wrestling better that wins this fight. That is the key. Even though Randy has the other elements to his game that Mark Coleman doesn't really have, and generally two great wrestlers, like I said, it goes down to who can bring that other element. In, in the end here, I think it is the better wrestler who wins this fight, and it'll be the better wrestler that night. Um, that's all. Uh, it's a pretty solid card. I mean, I'm, I'm just going to go look at the undercard for a moment here and just kind of highlight so what's, what are going to be some really good fights. Melvin Gillard versus Ronnie Torres. Philip Nova, Rob Emerson. That's a good fight there, too. Uh, I think people are going to finally get to see uh, what a Gracie... 
who's evolved can do because Hollis Gracie's on the card against Mustafa El Turk. Um, the hot bet of the night for some reason I haven't played around is Phil Davis and Stan Brian Stan. I don't understand that one. Anyways, that's all. Let me know if you liked this way better than the other way.